Now that we have the understanding of the circle, we'll take a look at the flat side of things. Now, five being a perfect interval, not just um, because it's seven half steps, but because it's a perfect sounding interval, and because the number five is also considered a number of perfection in the ancient order and in mathematical schemes. So this is a perfect fifth, so five is a number that really indicates some perfection of its own. And uh, so things to think about there, of, of course, for us uh, as Christians, uh, we have the five wounds of Christ, and so this becomes something very, very uh, uh, important for us to meditate on. And we also have the five senses of Jesus, so uh, those are also um, available to meditate on and something to think about when you think about uh, God becoming a man. He had five senses, and of course, there were five wounds in his precious body when he was crucified. So this f number five was ordained from the beginning to be very special, and God used these numbers in a special way for all of us to relate to and understand and remember things. So we have seven as a great number. We have, you know, uh, seven notes of the scale. We have seven things that form a perfect fifth. But we also have five half steps that form a perfect fourth. One, two, three, four, five. And so we can start looking at the circle of fourths from a different perspective than many people look at. And again, I do this because I relate everything to God, and this is something that I was inspired to see by the Holy Spirit. So I feel very comfortable with this way of thinking in terms of scale and chords. Many people see the circle of fourths going to the left and down, where you can be resolving a five to one as uh, opposed to going up a perfect fifth. So either way, it still fifths. If you're going to the left, it's resolving by fifth down and around. If you're going up, then you're ascending by fifths. But if you look at it the way that I'm sharing it with you, you are ascending by fourths if you go to the left. You're ascending by fifths if you go to the right. So if we go to the left of the circle, we're going to start with C, which has none. And then we're going to go up four keys, four intervals, a fourth interval, I should say, five semitones, and we're going to end up at F. We went up a fourth. And as we went up a fourth, it's going to be very easy to complete the scales in building going by flats because again there are none in C and if we go up a fourth an interval of a fourth then the next flat added or I should say the first flat added is a fourth above where we're starting so our first flat is B flat so our major scale is going to be this way. Here's our first flat, not this note, and then we have the rest are naturals. And there's our leading tone. If we keep everything we did, then our next place to go is a fourth up from F, which is, in fact, B flat. So if I start on this B flat and I go up a fourth, or five half steps, one, two, three, four, five, I end up at E flat. So here are the naturals, and here's the new flat, and then we add from there the rest of the naturals. So you can see a B flat scale right there. And you can always rewind and go through again to learn these and memorize them or to see them and visualize them. And that's why I'm going slow. I want you to be able to pause and see everything visually clear.
our next place, our next flat, this had two flats, of course, now we will have three. We'll go up to E flat, we'll keep the one we had, and we'll add a fourth above. So as a matter of fact, we're adding a perfect fifth, we're keeping that, and then we're adding a fourth below it to get our next flat. At a later time, we'll be talking about primary chords, which are the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. So here we are working in fourths, and we're already starting to see the shape of things to come for the human ear and the evolution of music going forward, because the logic is being built in as, with these fourths right here in front of us. The next place to go is a fourth up from E flat. There were three flats in E flat, so there will be four flats in A flat. I'm trying to do this so you can see the notes. I want to stay out of the way here. And you'll notice that the fourth is the new one. In the last exercise, when we were going up fifths, the seventh was the new one. That was the one that created the scale formation. Here, in this situation, the fourth is the one that's actually creating the new sound. So this was A flat. And now we go to a fourth up, and I'm going to do it here, D flat. There's our fourth. So you get the idea, it's going to sound the same, feel the same as a C sharp, but it's labeled completely different, D flat. E flat, there's an F natural, G flat, A flat, B flat, C, and then D flat. So from here, one, two, three, four, we're going up fourths, that's our next key. This is G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, G flat. Notice one, two, three, four, five, six. Six flats. Which means our last one, going by fourths, is not B, it's actually C flat. It can't be C because C has all naturals, we started with that, and that was zero, and that went up that way. We started with C to form the flats, so it was zero then as well. So it has to be called C flat if we're going to go this way and add flats. So when we do this, not thinking about the piano, we're looking at the piano, but all instruments will have to add their flats to this C scale, and so everything is going to be flat now. Seven flats total. So we have C flat, D flat, E flat, 
F flat, G flat, A flat, B flat, and back to C flat. practice in these keys and the wonderful thing is these keys will not be difficult for you. You'll, you start to get inside here, you start to feel these, you start to understand them. This is a wonderful thing to do when you're alone and you have the time. You can do one key a day or you can do them all like I did. You can see it's not taking that long to go through but having done this, if you did this several times, you're going to truly start to understand what's in here and what is the core foundation of all music. At least for the music that we have in our Western society, Western system. So um, Asian culture, Asian continents, of course, use different scales, although they've changed much of that and adapted to much of the European uh, scales and the things that we use from there over here to um, where we are located on the world map. But the bottom line is, this is where all of the sounds are for us, and uh, so we can learn so much by just playing in these simple areas. And in terms of uh, God and the Trinity, and God being three persons and one God, I really like this as my basis for theory, is the continually uh, reminding myself of the Holy Trinity and where everything emanates from and that the Trinity is dwelling in each of us. And this is a wonderful meditation when you think about it where you have a seven note scale here, seven naturals. And then if you go up through the circle you're going to be far away and have seven sharps. But if you think about it, it's right there next to the one with all seven. So here's all seven naturals, and here is all seven sharps. And here are all seven flats. So the maximum amount of sharps you can add into a key and the maximum amount of flats you can add, the maximum amount of naturals you can have, they're all in C. C, C sharp, and C flat. And Geist really liked that idea, that brought her over. So this is a good place to stop. And I will see you again with more of God's love, more of music, and more beauty, and more of Geist. Can you see that face? Good girl, Geist.